Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinars for this new year, uh, 2021. Uh, we hope to continue uh, supporting um, our MET families with tips for uh, better parenting. Today, we are going to discuss how to combat Zoom fatigue. Like other experiences uh, associated with the COVID-19 pandemic, um, Zoom fatigue is widely prevalent, intense, and completely new. Uh, it is defined as um, tiredness, a sense of tiredness, worry, or burnout associated with overusing virtual platforms of communication. The symptoms of Zoom fatigue can be det detrimental to a teaching environment, mainly if they occur frequently. They can also provoke tense situations at home because symptoms can be misunderstood as misbehavior as, as we will discuss later. The most relevant signs are difficulty concentrating, physical exhaustion, anxiety when entering or participating in a meeting, irritability, headaches, and eye strain. If a child leaves the online class um, to play with his toys or has an anger outburst or refuses to enter the session, it might not be a mood, but a real case of exhaustion from remote learning like Zoom fatigue. So we have to be careful with some of these signals that can be misunderstood as uh, some sort of misbehavior, but actually they are letting us know about uh, a, a, um, a permanent tiredness that the, the student can, can be facing due to overexposure to Zoom meetings. Uh, the problem can be more severe for children who still have not developed uh, the ability to understand that what they are experience, experiencing might be Zoom fatigue. Thus, parents should be very attentive to the tolerance their children have uh, while sitting in front of a screen or monitor changes in behavior and observe any mood changes that might be related to screen time. So if you or your children have experienced this, you're not alone. Uh, many people are coping with Zoom fatigue, but the question might be, why, why do we find video calls so draining? Here are some, some reasons. Uh, video calls force us to focus more on the conversation since we lack most of the nonverbal cues involved in face-to-face -face communication. We also become more easily distracted with our environment, with a computer itself or, the, or a cell phone, which makes it more difficult to follow the conversation. We need to be constantly reinforces that there are no interruptions at our homes. Our eyes and ears are tired due to the use of screens and headphones for longer periods of time. And we also need to focus on different phases on the screen and sometimes we watch our own image, which doesn't usually happen with face-to-face -face interactions. Some calls require the brain to work harder because it has to be constantly scanned and focused. Kids are constantly switching tasks, alternating between listening to the teacher, watching the teacher, listening to the classmates responses and trying to prepare their own responses. 
This is very different from the way the brain, the brain responds in an actual classroom where it doesn't have to work as hard to process and interpret the conversations. That's why it's so challenging. So, how to combat Zoom fatigue? While Zoom calls are part of the, this new normal uh, of both working and learning from home, they do, they do not have uh, to cause fatigue or distress. The, there are several steps uh, we can take to ensure healthy and productive social, academic, and work-related connections. For both adults and children, the ways to combat and manage Zoom fatigue look very similar. Now we're going to discuss some of these uh, tips, okay? First, uh, create a suitable space for learning. One of the stress triggers in children is being unable to move around because they spend too much time seated, sitting online, in, on, in online sessions. Uh, it is advisable to provide recess or break periods so that children can discharge some of that energy they have been accumulating while seated. Uh, for example, 10 minutes of walking around, a couple of stretching exercises. Sometimes we, we, we at the beginning, we uh, taught students to do some stretching exercises while sitting. Uh, and, uh, uh, or even having a short time playing with their pets can significant, significantly reduce stress levels and improve children's concentration. Creating a, a, a space suitable for learning also allows children to relax, which is crucial for them to be comfortable in their classes. This space to relax should facilitate using their computer without involving the, that child's, the, the child's extra effort. Uh, and, and it's recommended, uh, encourage them, seating them at eye level with the screen at a reasonable uh, distance for view. We're not too close and not too far. Another uh, tip is to create a flexible and realistic routine or schedule. Creating a schedule that considers the deadlines needed to fulfill school responsibilities, but at the same time flexible according to the child's need is instrumental in keeping Zoom fatigue at bay. It is also essential to give the children a sense of control and responsibility for their own schedule. Working with children who have trouble getting up early or need more breaks during a school day could be possible uh, within a, uh, this uh, online environment. Um, besides being necessary to keep them highly attentive and motivated can also be a challenge. But uh, these things need to be taken into consideration when we are designing uh, their routines or helping them designing their own routine and schedule. Another tip is the feedback, which is fundamental. Uh, while students in higher grade levels, such as third, fourth, fifth, and middle school are better equipped to identify and manage remote learning fatigue, uh, teachers and parents must must watch for factors that could trigger it and be prepared with strategies to reduce it. For this purpose, feedback is fundamental. It is necessary to have an open communication channel with children to know how are they coping emotionally and make decisions uh, based on their mental health and the capacity during confinement. When developing a schedule and setting a classwork pace, teachers should build in some time to check their students' status and motivate them to share their concerns. Parents can do the same thing at home. Try to open spaces to talk about how are they feeling. Um, I've been using, uh, in my meetings, I've been using different strategies to ask them about how are they feeling because for them sometimes it's, it's difficult to put put their emotions in words. So we use emojis. Uh, we also use a wheel of emotions so they can identify different emotions 
And I also ask them to tell me like in a six word sentence uh, to describe me, how are they feeling? These resources or strategies help uh, a lot uh, so they can try to express uh, how are they feeling. Uh, another tip is diversifying and prioritizing is critical. This is one of the most critical decisions uh, in a 100% online model. Activities involving work groups, uh, dialogues or debates need a virtual presence in real time. However, lessons on more theoretical aspects uh, of language or, I don't know, history or information that can be presented uh, remotely through a video or through a pre-recorded session uh, or for example, or, or school announcements that don't need to be learned at a particular moment uh, can be uh, presented in, uh, uh, by, uh, through video. So the time and concentration levels of students, teachers, and parents, uh, which are limited, uh, in, uh, can, can be optimized uh, when they access these uh, recordings in a time where they feel um, more relaxed or well rested so they can process that type of information. Um, in the context of prolonged isolation, we, we have to be careful with the time resource. Recording lessons offer the advantage of being viewed uh, in a flexible manner and as often as necessary. If a student needs to go over the, the, the class video several times to understand the instructions and to understand the explanation, it's easier for them to use the, the recordings in this, in this way. Uh, similarly, they free up the teacher and the student's time and availability. And the last tip is to not get so caught up in worrying about socialization, uh, which is another reason we steer children towards Zoom calls and often engage them ourselves. Like we feel that we need to be in touch with our friends, with our family, and we, we have to do these video calls, we have to have these Zoom meetings. And experts suggest guiding kids toward free play and getting outside frequently can be very helpful to deal with fatigue. Uh, this suggestion uh, is one that I uh, personally apply to my own well being. For me, walking around my neighborhood with my dog has been extremely helpful. Going outside also has additional benefits, and research shows that time spent in green spaces decreases stress and anxiety. Let's take advantage that we are in summertime, of course, going, going out with all the, the uh, healthy measures, wearing our face masks and everything. Uh, but it's important to now that the, the season allows it to go out more often, to recharge our batteries and to take advantage of, of, of the weather and the, and the nature. Um, while all these suggestions for preventing Zoom fatigue are important, the most important thing we can do for both our kids and ourselves when dealing with these overwhelming demands of, of staying connected digitally is to listen, okay? For me, that means being conscious of what my body and brain are telling me. Uh, for kids, it could mean understanding that sometimes they want to, 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 to go to lead meetings, to uh, pause the, the video and instead of focus on time alone or, run, or, or running outside in the sunshine, the key point here is to identify our feelings, listen to our body and identify what are we feeling and understand where is this coming from to then do something to regulate, regu regulate ourselves. If we don't pay attention to our body, we are not going to be able to understand what that neck pain means, what that uh, stress that we feel sometimes here around our shoulders mean. And uh, we have to stop and listen, okay? And we have to teach our children how to do that. 
because that's the first step to understand what's going on and then do something about it. Well, as usual, we have placed some additional resources at the uh, uh, MED counselor's website if you want to go and read a little bit more about what is Zoom fatigue and how to deal with it. And uh, I wanna uh, finish with this um, quote that says, do not confuse my bad days as a sign of weakness. Those are actually the days I am fighting the hardest. So I encourage all of you uh, to pay attention to the signals uh, children are sending through their behavior, through their moods and mood changes, and always encourage them to explore a little bit you know, deeper what's going on and where these feelings might be coming from, especially on those bad days. So now if you have um, questions or comments, Please feel free to unmute yourself or use a chat to, to share. Ms. Roxana is here with us. I don't know if you want to add something to, to the presentation, Ms. Roxana. Hello, everyone. I think it's really important what you mentioned about listening to our kids because sometimes um, they might log out of the meeting or turn off their camera and we might consider is a sign of misbehavior. And it could be, but it could also be a sign of Zoom fatigue. So it's really important to, to listen to our children and observe. And those um, tips that you share are very useful, not only for kids, but also for adults, because most of us are doing everything online and we could all benefit from you know, having um, all these tips in place in order to feel less the sympathy that we might have been experiencing during these months. Exactly, thank you very much for that. And yes, um, not just for kids, uh, this is also for us. And remember the power of modeling. If we model in our, with our own behavior, how can we take care of ourselves? Our children are going to learn about that too. So, um, well, we want to thank uh, you for being here with us. Oh, I have here, okay, sorry. Okay, yeah, Patricia, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, likewise, so nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and of course, if you need uh, further information about this or if you want to discuss this, in a, in a private manner for additional tips, you can also contact us and let us know and we can discuss it uh, uh, through a private meeting. Thank you very much. See you uh, next week in Zoom fatigue, but for lower elementary students with Ms. Roxana. Have a great afternoon, everyone.